So we're back with many of our old friends from the TV show. Una is there with her friends, May and Mossy. A little jump practice, Una? Not now, May. Mossy found the most amazing cave. No one knows about it. We see Silky, we see Bernie Nine, the crab. Ten. Of course, Baba, Una's little here, brother, is there. <laughs> <laughs> I really loved Baba so much. I think mine is Baba. Baba. He's just yeah. so cute. Baba. Baba. We're joined by new friends as well. We have Marvin, who's an otter. I've got my friends, the bats, and my rocks. And Isabel, who's a tufted puffin, and Phoenix, who's a very colourful golden pheasant. I'm Isabel, and this this is Phoenix. <gasps> wow. When the last egg of the season goes missing under mysterious circumstances. Our little egg is gone! <gasps> Who could have taken it? Where could it be? All the friends have to band together to try and find it and save it and bring it back home before a massive storm arrives and possibly puts the entire island in danger. The little egg might be safe now, but for how long? My name is Eva Whitaker and I play Isabel. Isabel is a new puffin on the island because she had to move away from her old home because of a big storm that happened. So she's still kind of finding her feet in this new place where she doesn't really know anyone and she's finding it a bit hard to make friends. I don't like it here. It's not home. But that doesn't mean we can't make it a new home. I think maybe she tries a bit too hard because she gets herself into a bit of trouble. Isabel is an eight-year-old going to a new school. How does she make friends? And how do each of those eight-year-olds deal with that aspect? So we have uh, Isabel, who, who's very tentative and worried about going somewhere new. I know it's hard when there's a lot of change. Look at that flyer. What is Mama talking about? When they blow away, they don't know where they're going, but they eventually find a little place to land and put down roots for themselves. Marvin, who arrives on the island, who deals with it by hiding away from everybody, and Phoenix is the complete opposite, who jumps forward and wants to, is excited about everything. It's a, it's a very universal story, whether it's small in just a new school or having to leave a country. It gives us a lot of opportunities to tell longer stories and to spend a little bit more time with the characters. What we talked about a lot in the film is the support of your friends and family. The family is really important and that really came through in the film as well. I think that shows the importance of kindness and the importance of friendship really well, which I really liked. I really liked it when they met Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Come with us and we'll show you around. You mean go outside? And these things are really fun. I would love to have them as a best friend. Yes, it'll be fun. And there's thousands of rocks. Thousands? Perhaps even millions. And I think um, understanding and understanding that other people could be going through a tough time maybe, and maybe helping them through that. One of the core themes of the film really is around biodiversity and connection with nature which makes it really a, a great teaching tool for young children. To expand on that, we've developed some lovely nature-based activity sheets that are downloadable from our website. They're aligned with the early years curriculum and really there to help parents and teachers to uh, guide explorations of local environments. I think it's also a good introduction to the effects of climate change and I think it explains it in a very um, simple way that's good for younger people to understand. It was really fun to be able to go back to Puffin Rock and back to the island to help out on the movie a little bit. I also like Una, she's like, I'm the oldest of my siblings so I kind of connect a bit with her. Friends, friends, play together. My favourite part of Buff and Rock and the New Friends uh, was the music. We had some really great uh, resources from the show. So Einer, who was the original composer on the show, so we had like a really rich library to use, but then we also, for the first time, had actual songs that were sung on screen. I, I enjoyed doing the singing, but it was, it was more nervous, nerve-wracking than the talking, because scared and kiss, I just... That didn't sound good enough or had like a wee voice crack or something. My favourite song in the film is Every Single Day. Every single mm -hmm. day we play. 
after he first met Marvin, the otter, who's kind of very scared of everything. He doesn't want to leave his cave. Una sings a song for him where she brings him kind of on a guided tour around Puff and Rock. I love it. It just has all the best parts of Puff and Rock. Wash up on our shore, something to explore. I think Puff and Rock is a really gentle and nice show and I hope the film kind of gives that little little part of the world to anyone watching. It's lovely to be able to have something safe you can bring your young kid to as their first cinema experience. I'm really kind of happy that we have a film that maybe some new kids will discover for the first time in the cinema but on a much bigger canvas than on the television. My favourite part of the film was the storm. The rainbow. Because it was full of colours. Every single day. Pop and rock with a new friend.